Amen. Thank you. Please go ahead and be seated. It's good to have you all here today. We continue on with making the church the place to be. But before I have our message start, it's time. We're going to have something we haven't had in a while. We're going to have our children's church. So anybody, kindergarten, first and second grade, if you want to go with Miss Carrie, she is in the back right there. Kindergarten, first and second graders, you may be dismissed. And uh, have a great time and we will... <laughs> We'll see you in just a little bit. I made the comment in the first service is how fast those kids run out of here when it's my turn. Amen. <laughs> they are ready to get out of here. And so I just wonder how many of you adults, if I said, okay, it's time for y'all can walk out of here too, man. Y'all be jumping pews, man. All right. But it's good to have everybody here. Hope you have had a great time in our worship service. And today we're going to continue with making the church the place to be. And what I'm going to do is have a message tied entitled today, Don't Hide the Light. Don't hide the light. We are to be the light of the world. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. One of the things that I, I've heard people uh, comment before is as we talk about coming to know Jesus and reaching the lost to come to Christ, one of the things that I hear a lot is the idea that the one of the biggest detriments to people becoming Christians are simply Christians. Christians themselves are detriment to get allowing other people to come to Jesus because of what they see in the Christian, what they see sometimes in the church. And, and, and I've had even people say, I don't understand why I, I need that because I don't see a whole lot of difference between me and, and them. The way they act, the way they talk, the things that they do, we don't see a big difference. So I want to look today at what Jesus said about how we are to make a difference. I've also shared with you with a comment last week, and I said that it's not the responsibility of the world to realize the importance of the church, but it's incumbent upon the church rather to be, it's the church's responsibility to make the difference in the world to let them see that they do need the church. They do need what we offer through Jesus Christ. And so, but we sometimes get that confused. But the church will not be the place to be until we as Christians begin to allow Christ to live in us and the people can see Christ in us. That's when the church will be the place to be. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Matthew chapter 5, starting verse 14. We're going to be reading a very familiar passage of Scripture that many of you have heard. And today I want to review it just a little bit. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 14. If you would, stand in honor of reading God's Word this morning. And you at home, follow along with us. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Jesus says here, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to, the, to all who are in the house. And then Jesus tells us here, he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings you've given us. And God, now as we continue on with this worship time, I pray that you would continue to draw us to you, Father. Allow our attention to be on you. Bind all distractions away from us now, Lord. And let it be just about you. And Father, I pray that today, that the words I'm about to say, they'll not be my words. But Father, they'll be yours. I pray that this message is not my message. I pray that it's not something that, that I've just come up with, it, Father, but it's your message. And I pray that the response would be, Lord, as you desire for it to be. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. As we look at this text today, this is a very familiar passage of Scripture that we've all learned. We've all known this. As a matter of fact, what I want us to do today is point one is to realize we are the light. We've heard this scripture, I think, so many times, and we've even learned it as little kids. We learned that we are the light of the world. And I think that as we continue to just say these words over and over and learn them in vacation Bible school, maybe where you first learned them. I think that sometimes we forget that what it really means and how the impact that Jesus really had. Listen, Jesus never said something that was just kind of a light thing to say. Ah, I'm just, I don't know what else to say, so I'm going to say something. What he meant here was that he really wanted us to understand that you and I, if we know Christ, we are the actual light of the world. 
that we are going to show him through us. And so we need to realize that we're the light, not just have it in our mind, not just go, well, yeah, that's a cute verse, but to really man, grasp a hold. What does that mean? And so when we realize that we're the light, we realize light gives warmth and energy. That's what light is. Light produces warmth and it produces energy. And as we are the light of the world, that's what he tells us as a church. That's what we're supposed to do for this world. Amen. We're supposed to provide a light. We're supposed to provide warmth. We're supposed to provide energy through Jesus Christ working in us. So what I want us to understand, and that is in this dark uh, and cold world, we must show Jesus. Amen. We must show Christ. That's what he's trying to get us to understand. By our warmth. By us being warm and loving people. That's what God has called us to be. As a matter of fact, we, we talked a little bit about the idea last week about the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, meekness. All those things are laid out there. And he says, hey folks, this is what you... As my church, this is what you as Christians ought to be. This is how you ought to be. You ought to be warm, nice, pleasant people and loving people. This is the way you're supposed to go out into the world. And man, it's a cold world out there. Amen. People are after each other out there. Amen. But any show you watch, reality TV just blows my mind. Is that you watch anything that they have, and it's always about watching people willing to deceive each other, lie to each other, trick each other, so that they can come out on top of a competition. My friend, listen to me. That's the way of the world. But that should not be the way of the church. We ought not be that way. We ought to be the light. We ought to be producing warmth. We ought to be producing energy. Man, a church ought to be an enthusiastic place, amen? Even in the craziness of this world, we ought to have energy. Man, out there today, it's tough to get going sometimes. I hear people all the time say, I just don't know that how much more I can take. I don't know how much farther I can go. My friend, listen to me. In the church, there ought to be an enthusiasm and an excitement because we have something to be happy about, amen? We have something to be pleased about. We have peace in our lives. We have hope and we have all of these things through Jesus Christ working in us. And we ought to be an enthusiastic people. But not only be enthusiastic, but also committed. We look and we see that we ought to be quick to serve. Why should we in the church be quick to serve? It's because we realize that what we are called to do is to reach people for Jesus. And we, if we have the Holy Spirit working in us, and we are having that warm and, and we love people with all of our heart, then if we do that, then we ought to be willing to serve in the body so that we can then have the body reaching people for Jesus. So there ought to be an enthusiasm and there ought to be a desire to serve. Now, when we begin to talk about desire to serve, or when I begin to talk about, hey, we ought to be looking for opportunities to serve, that's where I get kind of a pullback. Oh, now, wait a minute, preacher. Do you know how busy I am? Do you know how busy we are? Do you know all the things that we have going on in our life? Listen to me. I do know all of that, but I do understand this, that God uses the body, God uses the church to reach people for Jesus, and the ministries that we have here at First Baptist West are used to be able to disciple people, to grow people, to preach to people, to reach people, and to bring them to Christ. That's what we ought to be about, amen? So in us, there ought to be a warmth, there ought to be an enthusiasm, there ought to be an action that goes on in our lives because we are powered not by us. We are powered by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is working in us and continually guiding us and strengthening us. So not only in this dark world should we show Christ, but we show him by what we say and what we do. That's how we show Jesus, my friend. By the things that I say, the things that I talk about. So when are my actions and and my reactions, the way I act out out in the world, the way I act in the church... But not only how I act, but how I react. Do you know that we tell a great story every time we react to a situation? How I react tells people who it is I serve. So by our actions, by our reactions, how about even by our words? 
the words that we say. How about the attitudes? The attitude that we have in this world. Now, I'm going to warn you. I didn't warn them in the first service. Uh, but I'm going to ask a question. And every time that I preface, I want to preface one of these questions is by everybody saying that I tell everybody, look at me. Because I didn't say this in the first service, and you'll understand what happened. I, I, I ask, and I ask you, have you ever known anyone with a bad attitude? That's why I asked you to look at me. Now, in the first service, as soon as I said it, I mean, heads started popping. And they started looking around. I said, whoa, stop, look at me. I'm trying to save you a whole lot of misery here. And I forgot to mention to you. So, folks, again, look at me. But do you know or have you been around people that really have a bad attitude? They're not fun. Amen? And listen, if you're going, you know what? I'm looking around. I don't know anybody in my group that has a bad attitude. It may be you that has the bad attitude. Amen? But if you think about it, bad attitudes don't like being by themselves. Bad attitudes like having people around them feeling the same way. If you're in a, if you, if you're in a bad mood, the worst thing that could ever happen to you is be around somebody in a good mood. Amen? Because it just aggravates you, does it not? Here you haven't had your coffee in the morning. Kids have been crying. Things are kind of rough. And man, you want everybody to share the misery with you. Amen? So this is the idea that when we have an attitude or our attitude is bad, we're showing what's in our heart. And we don't want to be alone when, it's a bad, when we have a bad attitude. So when we show people Christ, we need to show them in the way that we act, the way we react, our words, our attitudes, and also our commitments. What is it that I'm committed to? That speaks volumes in this world today. Those things that I am willing to put my time and my effort and my money and my responsibility, what I'm willing to put that into, that again speaks volumes. The Bible tells us in Matthew 7, 16, you will know them by their fruits, by their actions, by their actions, reactions, their attitudes, all of these things, those things that are coming out of us, that's how people are going to determine who we are. They're going to determine an awful lot about us. Jesus said this. Now, I want you to understand, when Jesus, when Jesus said this right here, he wasn't talking about the church. Well, he was talking about religious people, but he wasn't talking about his followers. He was talking about those religious leaders Basically, who were false prophets, who were teaching false things. And he said, by what what you're hearing from them and what you're seeing in their actions, this is a produce of their heart. Every word and every action are fruit from our hearts. Amen. So when I say something, even though we might have said, ooh, I I didn't mean that. You know what I've determined? When I say something, now in that moment, I might have regretted it two seconds later or half a second later, but I say that which I meant at that moment. Now, we like, oh, I I, I didn't mean that. My question is, if you didn't mean it, why did it come out? Jesus said, out of the heart flows the, out of the mouth flows the abundance of the heart. So when we are producing fruit that is hurtful, harmful, negative, tearing people down, hurting people, spiteful, not showing Christ, my friends, listen to me, that is what is in the abundance of our heart because out of the abundance, out of the mouth flows the abundance of the heart. So what's here, and that's what Jesus was telling them, people will know you by your fruit, by what you say. They'll know your heart by how you act. They'll know the things that you're really feeling by your reactions. They'll know that. Now, again, you might have regret saying it, and it might change instantly. But, folks, what's there comes out. And Jesus was talking about them. Sinners sin because that's what's in their hearts. Amen? That's what's there. We do... Who we are now, we, we might hold it for a while. We might decorate it up a little bit and hide it some. 
But eventually what's here comes out here. Amen? You, you can't hold it. You can't hide it that long. But what's here will eventually come out here. And that's the fruit. That's the works. Those are the words. Those are the actions, the attitudes. Jesus said, hey, folks, you need to realize you and I, the church, you at home, you need to realize we're the light. We're supposed to be producing that warmth and that energy, that excitement, that direction, that purpose, that joy, that peace. That's what we ought to be exemplifying in our lives. So realize it, my friends. Don't just, don't just let it be here and say, oh, that's a cute verse. Man, realize the depth of that. Man, hey, here's some, this is some deep theology right here, amen? Now, we learn it in vacation Bible school, so we think this is kind of a little kid song, a little kid's verse. As a matter of fact, we even uh, sing little, little songs. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Right? That's a kid's song. Hey, I'm telling you, Jesus told some deep theology right here. You are the light of the world. You ought to be different. You ought to not look and act like everybody else. Which brings me to my second point. The second point here is light shine to be seen. He tells us here, Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine so it's be so different. And when that light is shining, what he says is you're going to be in contrast to our natural surroundings. He says basically what's going to happen is let your light so shine that you're going to stand out, if you will. It should be easy in our day and time to distinguish between God's people and the world. Amen? Should be easy. You should be able to look. Look at the things that are going on. Look at the things that are being said. Look at the things that are happening in our world. It ought to be easy to tell those who are following the world and those who are following Christ. But can I tell you something, my friend? By looking at social media, by reading Facebook posts, by all the things that are going on, I am here to tell you it is getting harder and harder to distinguish between the two. And it worries me. Because we should stick out like a sore thumb. We should be so different in the, and such a contrast between us and what we say and what we do and how we act and how we react. And the things that we post on Facebook, the things that we post on Twitter, the things that we, we, we allow to come into our homes. Folks, there ought to be a difference between us. Why should there be a difference? Because there's a huge difference between someone being lost and someone being saved. As I shared with you last week, those who are lost are slaves to sin. They can't help but do that. But we who are children of God, we are set free from all of that. We have a Holy Spirit working in us. We have a God that has given his life for us. And my friends, listen, as a result of that, I should not look and act and talk like everybody else in this world. There should be a big difference. The farther we go along in time, I believe there should be even a bigger difference between us and the, and the world. Because the things of the world, and I've said it so many times as the pastor here in this church, The closer I get to God, the more I'm following Him, the less sense this world should make. We should look at this world and the things that they're trying to do now, the things they're trying to make common. We ought to look at that and say, that makes no sense whatsoever. How can you even bring that up? Because there's a contrast between us and the lost world. Now listen, I'm not, folks at home, I'm not standing up here saying we're better than them. I'm not. Remember, I've said that many, many times, that I am no better than the lost person. I'm just better off because I have Jesus. There's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about you. You didn't become saved by your merits. You didn't get saved because of your righteousness. You got saved because of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And he transferred his righteousness to you and took his sin, your sin upon himself. 
That's what it is. So listen, I am not standing up here as some hyper-religious person that is so much better and distinguished from the world. Absolutely not. I am a sinner saved by grace, but I have a Holy Spirit in me that ought to not let me be comfortable in certain situations. And I ought to be different. You ought to be different. Jesus said, let your light so shine. You know what that means? He said, let it be so evident. It's it's such contrast. But not only that, very quickly. It should not be covered up. He said, you don't take this light and put it under a bushel. Or put it under a basket so that it, it is now hidden. In other words, folks, listen, we should stand out in the world because we are not hiding ourselves from the world. We should not hide from the world. As a matter of fact, Jesus, in the book of John, chapter 17, starting at verse 14 and verse 15, he said this, I have given them your word. Now, he's praying for his apostles. He's praying for us. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Now listen, here's where I'm talking about. He says, because we stand out and the reason we stand out is because of the word, which is Jesus and living in us and his word here that we stand on and we, we set all of our principles from. He said, as a matter of fact, because I've given them your word, the world hates them for it. Why does the world hate us for that? The world hates us for that because if we are being doers of the word and not hearers only, we are going to live in contradiction to what the world is saying and the world is not going to be happy with us because we are standing out again like a sore thumb. We make, listen, we ought to make people uncomfortable. Now, not on purpose. Not on purpose. Do you know, I, I tell people, man, I, as a pastor, I can clear a room pretty quick. If I walk into a room and so, some guys over there talking, and man, they're going on, and, and they go, oh, wait, there's the preacher. Oh, oh, oh. Man, I can clear a room because I, people know I shouldn't be for that. I shouldn't be able to talk like that, act like that. So the, he says, I, 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 I'm given the word, I've given them your word, now the world hates them. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. What Jesus is saying here, he said, listen, we're different, but I need you to be different. I don't need you to hide yourself away. I need you to be out there being different. I need you to be out there looking differently. I need you to be out there talking differently. I need you out there. I don't need you to hide yourself. I think sometimes if we're not careful, as I shared before, that we can circle the wagons. And man, we can protect everything that's inside of here and we can lock ourselves away. Jesus said, man, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. He said, but here's what I do. I think, God, I I pray that you should keep them from the evil one. I think you should, I pray that you would guard them, take care of them. Because I'm going to have them go out into the world. My friends, we are not to be, we are to be in the world, but not of the world. I've got to be out there. We've got to be out there. But I think what happens sometimes is that we want to not be of the world, in the world, because we want to try to protect ourselves. Now, why do we protect ourselves? Well, because Jesus just said in verse uh, John chapter 17, I have given them your word and the world hates them. I don't, I don't know any of us that wants to be hated. Amen. I, I don't know any of us that doesn't care what people think about us. All of us have that idea. We, we, we'd like people to like us. Amen. As a matter of fact, it's incumbent and imperative that the world does respect us. They do like us because they don't, we don't want them running from us every time we walk out there. Cause they, they think that we think we're better than them. That's why I told you that a while ago. But what, what we do is we want to protect ourselves. And that's what the world is doing right now. The world likes to come out and say, okay, If you are a Christian, that means you are a hater of people. 
and they give us some phobe name. You're this phobe or that phobe or you're, a, you're just a natural phobe. Well, then what we, our natural tendency is to say, no, no, we're not. We're not. I, I, I love everybody. We're not. I'm not a phobe. And so what we do to not be called that, not to be labeled that, not to be put into that category, if we're not careful, we will back off and say, okay, look, to prove that I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to pull myself from the world because I sure don't walk, want to walk around and be labeled any of those things. Folks, I see people and I see churches pulling back on their stance of the scriptures because they don't want to be labeled something bad by the world. That's why Jesus said, man, don't fear what the world thinks. Don't you fear the world because what can they do to you? They can't do anything to you. They can kill you. But that's a reward, amen? Paul says to live is Christ, but to die is gain. All they can do is call me names. And that hurts. The person who, who wrote that little thing, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. They don't have a clue what they're talking about, amen? Words hurt. I don't want to be called that. But I also don't want to disappoint God. I want to be a light. I, I, I do want to stand out. I, I, I pray that we do stand out. But we do it to hide ourselves, to, pr- to protect ourselves. But can I tell you something? God will protect us. God's going to protect us. God's going to be the one to hold us up. As a matter of fact, my friend, listen to me. Going into the world is an essential part of our calling. He didn't say stay in the church and make disciples. Right? He says go where? Not go here. Where do we go? Where is going? Out there. Where? In the world. He says go out there. Let your light so shine before them that they're going to give God the glory for it. And why will they give God the glory for it? Because we're the ones telling them God's done it. We go out there, we don't take credit for this. It's God. I mean, you remember in the book of Daniel, every time one of the kings wanted Daniel to interpret a dream for him, he said, hey, go go get Daniel. He can do this. And Daniel would come in and he'd say, "Give it. I hear you can. And you know, every time he'd say, it's not me. I'm not the one interpreting this dream. I will tell you what the dream means, but I'm going to only tell you because the Father, God, who is now, we're going to tell me, reveal the truth to me, I will then reveal it to you. Because Daniel said, it's not me, it's God. Listen, when we're going out in that world, we're going to mention the name God. But we're going to do it in a good way, amen? There's a whole lot of people mentioning God's name, but it's not in a good way. But we're going to do it. Hey, this isn't us, this is God. This is God doing this. So he's going to protect us. But the second one, very quickly, is that we want, we want to blend in the world. He says, don't cover it up by blending in. We should never feel comfortable in this world system. Why should we not feel comfortable in the world system? Because as last week, what did I tell you? That he says, do not be slaves to sin, which are the basics of basic elements of this world. Remember, and I told you, what are the base elements of this world? Satan and his demons and their, their, their rules. It's, it's their system. Can I tell you, folks, we should not ever feel comfortable in Satan's system. If we begin or have gotten to where we can feel comfortable in Satan's system, something is desperately wrong in our lives. There are places, you and I, you at home, if we're Christians, we should not feel comfortable at. We shouldn't. There, there's places that we as Christians should not be able to go. And I always love hearing people, well, but Jesus went. But he didn't participate. He went as a light shining in the darkness. But there's also not places we go or things we do, but there are things that we allow into our homes 
that we get entertained by that should actually appall us more than entertain us. Now, I know you're sitting there saying, man, preacher, this is harsh. No, it's not harsh. It's hard. Jesus speaks hard words, never harsh. This is hard. This is difficult. Man, it's difficult for me. But there are things that we should not fit into. But we, we, if we're not careful, we will blend into the world. And he says, listen, your light should not be able to be hidden underneath a basket. Don't make yourself look darker just so you can be happy in this world. Don't make yourself look like everybody else so that you can blend in and not draw attention. Listen, my friends, the church in year 2020 should be drawing attention to itself. By the way I'm acting, by the way you're acting, by the way we're talking, by the things we're posting, the pictures we're showing, we ought to be standing out right now. But too many of us, myself included, if I'm not careful, will kind of say, well, you know what, I don't want it to go out, but man, I'm going to. I'm just going to put a little damper on it for a while. I, I really kind of like being liked. And that's how we're going to win people to Jesus when we're liked. Not liked that way. Because how are we going to win someone to Jesus when I'm not showing Jesus? Amen? Amen? I need to be showing Jesus. He says, let your light, which my light is not me, and your light is not you. It's Jesus shining through us. I want to close with this, that there was a little boy one time driving home from church with his parents, and he was sitting in the back seat, and uh, he said, uh, you know, the preacher today said, God is a big God. Is that true? And they said, yeah. He said, the preacher also said that God is light. Is that true? And they said, well, yeah. And he said, he also said that God who is big and God who is light lives in each of us. Is that true? And they, he said, yes, if we know Christ, yes, God's living in us. He said, Okay, if this God who is so big and this God who is so bright is living in me, shouldn't he be oozing out of me? Yes. Let your light, which is Jesus, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works, your Actions and reactions and you standing out like a sore thumb. Let them see you like that. And let them hear you give him the glory. And they will in turn, guess what? Will glorify him as well. Why? Because they will want what you've got. Because what you've got is different than they're seeing out there every day of their life. When you go to school, you ought to stand out. When you go to work, you ought to stand out. When you go to the grocery store, you ought to stand out. When you go to the restaurant today for lunch, wherever you go, you ought to stand out. You ought to be different. My friend, today, may I encourage you, let your light so shine before men. Because you are the light of the world. I'd like you to bow your head as I encourage the praise team to come back up now. We're going to take just a few moments. We're going to enter into a time of praise and worship. And if you're here or you're at home today, and for whatever reason... You, you're sensing that you've never had that light, that, man, you've been trying to do stuff, but you know it just hasn't been working, and maybe today there's something missing in your life. Maybe that missing is the missing element is Jesus Christ. So if you're here today or you're at home and you don't know Christ as your Savior, I believe Him, I trust Him enough, I trust the Holy Spirit enough that He's speaking that to you right now. And if you need Jesus, man, do not let this program end without you having Christ in your life. All you have to do is call upon his name, ask forgiveness of your sin, allow him to take that sin away from you, give you his righteousness, and confess his name. And my friend, you will be saved. You can come and visit with me. I'll pray with you. You at home can call call that number at the church. 
Someone will be there to pray with you. Man, if you don't know Jesus, we want you to turn to him today. Let that light begin to shine in you and he will transform your life. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but man, I, I, I know that I've been hiding. I've been hiding my light a little bit. I've been trying to blend in. I thought that was natural. But today, I, I, I want that fresh start. I want to I wanna stand out today. You have to do is say, God, forgive me for blending in too much. Forgive me for not shining that light. Forgive me for not standing out in this world. Forgive me for being just like the world. Renew that energy in me. Renew that excitement in me. Renew that light. God, let it be me today. I want to shine your light to give you glory so that others can come to know you because of what I do. God, speak to me today. Speak to me today. Help me today. My friend, you can do that right here. I'm going to pray over you. And then we're going to stand. And we're going to enter into a time of praise and worship. And then if you need to come, would you come? you at home, call the church. Or right there where you are, just, just make that decision. Commitment to Christ. That our light will shine. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this very special time. And I pray if there's someone here or someone at home that doesn't know you as their Savior, that God today would be that day. They would come to you to be forgiven of their sin, to receive you into their life, and God to get the light shining. Father, if there's someone here or someone at home that the Lord has been compromising, been giving in, been covering up that light, Lord, that they would allow you to remove all the elements away from them. God, that they could stand out and they could be renewed and recommitted to what you have so that they can glorify your name. And God, use First Baptist West to glorify your name as well. Let us be a church that stands out from this world. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, would you stand?